Hey everyone, welcome to Jojo's World. Come on in. It's a tight winter's morning for not us. Probably in the Northern Hemisphere it's winter though. No, because it's spring here, Nick. Which means it's winter in Alaska. Hi, I'm Liam S. Smith, co-host of this podcast. And I'm Nick Ballantyne, secondary co-host of this podcast. That's right, I'm the primary baby. (laughs) You deserve all the acclaim and all the effort. This is... Jojo's World, our Jojo's Bizarre Adventure recap and discussion podcast where we talk about little anime called Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. How what? long do we talk about it for? 45 minutes to an hour. So get your seatbelts on. Strap your boots in, baby. Tie up those shoelaces or you'll trip on the stick amazing yourself, references. Stick yourself in one of those door frame exercise pull-up things where you you manacle your ankles to the space in the middle of the door frame and let's do some pull-ups, baby. Bind, torture, kill, that's what I always say. Oh, JoJo's God. Bizarre <laughs> Adventure. Today, we watched the... 26th episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 5 Ventai Oreo entitled A Little Story from the Past. My name is Doppio. Oh, well, hello there. It is the 139th episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure as a whole, covering chapters 541 through 544 of the manga. With just a light sprinkling of 569. What the fuck? That's completely out of nowhere. (laughs) Where does that even come in? I don't know. No, okay. All right, fair. Just probably with some of that exposition at the start, maybe. What exposition? There was no exposition. There was just some background. You mean the Yeah. That wouldn't have been 569. That was exposition, Nick. Oh, is that what that is? Maybe. I don't know. Probably not. I thought exposition is where people just talk. And they're like, I have a story to tell you. And you're like, great. You mean, say, for instance, a little story from the past? (gasps) Why, tell me more. My name is Doppio. Hey, you know whose name is more important than that? A little someone who donated on patreon.com slash Jojo's World. A little donor from the present. (laughs) And their name is Thermite. Thermite. (laughs) Which, as we all know, burns at a solid 4,000 degrees centigrade. Or somewhere around there. I definitely knew that. (laughs) And let me tell you, it's really good for getting into vaults, getting into our hearts. Oh, that's the thing, the thermite lance that you use to laser cut through. Indeed. I don't know, spaceship holes. Pretty much. It burns real fucking hot. And you could probably warm up my spirit with it. You know what else burns real fucking hot? My love for thermite. Thank you. The (laughs) material that you use to cut through spaceship holes. Hey, thermite, good on you for being such a hot motherfucker. Thermite. Buy it from Bunnings. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Where lowest prices are just the beginning. (laughs) Bunnings Warehouse. (laughs) Do you reckon there's going to be a story? And cut to Bunnings ad, zoom into the big um, mosaic of all the different Bunnings employees, zoom in on one, it's me wearing a Bunnings apron. We've got a little joke around the the staff room like, uh, oh yeah, thermite, that burns real hot and it gives money to Jojo's world. (laughs) You know, you can't have thermite both ways, you know what I'm saying? I like to go out to the the weekly Bunnings uh, charity sausage sizzle out the front and cook myself up one of their snags with a a, a nice little chunk of thermite. You know, the kids really love it. They come back to me and they say, you know what, I really enjoyed that thermite sausage. You know, I think it really pays off in the long run, you know? Yeah. And it pays off in the short run for us here at JoJo's World, thanks to the support of our valued patrons, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Thanks, Thermite. We value your contribution. Nick. Yes. A little story from the past. My name is Doppio. Oh, why, hello there. What do you think about this episode? This episode is off the damn chain. This is a uh, change of pace. Is it? I literally, we were talking about, is this even connected to the None of our good friends are in this episode. The closest that we get is we see the aeroplane that one of them can make with his mind. And even then, that's just, hey, they're over there doing some stuff. Yeah. But you're here with me. That's all I got. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. We're teeing up one of uh, one of the the funnest shown in anime tropes, the villain battle, where two guys. Okay, ordinarily it's two guys that we hate and they fight each other, and it's like, oh, one of them's really cool and one of them's the ultimate evil, mm. and like, you know, like when Freezer fought Vegeta, you know. 
Yes. And it's like, oh, we don't really like either of these guys, but we want one of them to win. Vegeta, at least, has an honor system. Where yeah. he's like, I would just want to be stronger. And you're like, I can get behind that. Vegeta works on the honor system. That's why wherever he goes, he puts out a little jar that says, need a penny, take a penny, have a penny, mm. leave a penny. I don't know what that means. Um, But in this instance, it's two guys who we kind of don't really know either of them <laughs> trying to kill each other. It's incredible, Liam. Because, of course, lest we forget, a lot of the exposition scenes we've seen with Risotto and Nero have been added to the anime, so if we consider this in the context of the original manga, he just he's shows just up. kind of a guy who is there trying to kill a guy we've just met. <laughs> well, the thing is, we know who one of them is, not very intimately at all, but rather we just kind of know, oh, he does stuff. We know that. Oh, and lest we also forget... Per um, just a quick fact check on the manga slash anime differences of the JoJo wiki page for this episode. Mm -hmm. The boss's backstory, originally shown in chapter 569, is extended and moved to a point earlier in the story. So so at this point in the manga, we wouldn't really know who either of these guys (laughs) are, but we know they want to kill each other. So they just show up out of nowhere. There's this guy with pink hair and another guy with baubles and a joker's hat. He's all like... You, let's dance. And the other guys all like, I don't know how to dance. And you're just like, where's Jorno? Where's, where's Jorno? What, what? Whenever where's... Jorno isn't around, all the other characters should be asking, where's Jorno? Abakio's like, this is why I hate Jorno so much. Where is he? We open. Smash cut. Actually, we open with the we open with the opening this time, which is atypical, unusual, a rare experience. A cold open that's actually just the opening sequence? Unheard of. Yeah. The coldest of opens. Oh man, I feel so cold. The narrator's like, I'm going to tell you a little story from the past. It was summer of 1965. Mm. And I don't know if you noticed, Mm. but it caught my eye that even though he's telling us it's summer, we are in the midst of a fierce rainstorm. (laughs) (laughs) Look, you can have fierce rainstorms in summer, Liam. (laughs) It's called dark times. We're on some sort of prison island, mm-hmm. uh, and the guards are all like, Hey, prisoner 696, what's going on in there? And she's all like, I'm giving birth, you jags. 696, women like you can never change. <laughs> what the hell is that That's from? That's lame is. Oh, no. 24601. My duties to the law. You have no rights. Come with me now. 24601. That sounds like a rock opera. Now the wheel has turned around. Jean Valjean is nothing now. (laughs) How much of this can you just do off by heart, Liam? It's a good musical. One of the better ones. I mean, yeah, I agree. But how much can you do by heart? Well, the problem is at the same time while Javert is singing that, Uh. Jean Valjean is also singing his own counterpoint thing about how he's going to beat up Javert if he makes him. True. And at best, I would just be like, two, four, six, oh, one. Something, something, something. And you just feel like, Nick, I need you to actually learn the words if we're going to do the <laughs> musical. Um, so 696 is, which I guess is the only name we ever get for her. Fair, fair. Because the prison system has stripped her of her identity, only <gasps> giving her a serial number. Ooh. Is it even a it's serial It's a commentary number? on how we dehumanise prisoners. Araki does it again. <laughs> um, and so this woman is in quite a bit of distress in her cell. Mm-hmm. And we see that she is heavily pregnant. And apparently everyone's in shock at how she's pregnant. She's been in... This is a women-only prison island. Even all the guards are women, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, like Not like Orange is the New Black. Yeah, that had some problems with that system. Yep. Uh, she's two years into a ten-year sentence for bank robbery and assault. Mm-hmm. She wasn't pregnant earlier today. <laughs> and yet here she lies on the ground screaming and water is broken. Hmm. How curious. Concerning, very concerning. Is this some kind of stand power bullshit? Or is it just Araki doesn't understand how pregnancy works and then had to retcon it later by saying, oh. Look, I can't remember if I'm thinking of something else, but if I'm thinking of this, then it's a, the, it's exposited at some point that through sheer force of will, she held her pregnancy in for an extra two years. Extra, um, what? Uh, two years, because she wasn't pregnant no, earlier that um, day. I'm doing a quick bit of mathematics. What, 12 year months, and three months? Plus, yeah, so 15 months. By sheer force of will. Is that this or is that something else? That sounds insane. That's why I think it might be this. <laughs> 
if it sounds too good to be true, let me just quickly don't joking. look at my screen because I'm pulling up the boss's All right. page. All right, fine. I'll look. I'll look away. I won't look at your screen. I'll look at my screen, which I don't have. But that's insanity. Yes. <laughs> by sheer for- <laughs> that's like saying by sheer force of will, I didn't die when my head was chopped off. Much like Bruford, no, Tarkus broke the uh, the headsman's axe with his stiff neck. <laughs> no, the exact opposite of that. No, that happened. No, but I'm saying I get my head chopped oh. off. He managed to not get his head chopped off by sheer force of will. Okay, per Jojo Wiki, um, the mother claimed she had been pregnant for two years and there was no father. Well, the father had been dead for oh, two yeah, years. Yeah. yeah, long gone. I think, perhaps I'm thinking of something else. I mean, it's like a Metal Gear thing or something. It sounds very Metal Gear, to be fair. Anyway, so she's like, I've been pregnant for two years. It, I just wasn't showing until now. The father is dead. I'm here in prison. What up? Things suck for me, but you know what doesn't suck? I'm getting this pregnancy out of the way. Let's do this, boys. Yep, she gives birth to a beautiful baby boy. Oh, he has a little tuft of pink hair. He's, uh... Got weird fucking eyes. Yeah, his, he blinks at one point in this and his eyes go from like brown to red. Ooh, what could it mean? It means at some point when he was growing up, his eyes changed colour. <laughs> because the adults that we see have like, what, like purple eyes and green eyes? What do you mean the adults we see? The adults we see. Do you mean the, the dude all grown up? Yeah, Vinegar Doppio. His name's Vinegar Doppio. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, he's got brown eyes and the boss's eyes, we've seen several times at this point, are green. Mmm, they are quite green. That's true. Not saying that Doppio and the boss are in any way related at this point. Not well, yet. And the, the prison guards are like, okay, 696, clearly we can't raise this baby here. We're going to take it off somewhere and they can take care of it. Would you like to nominate a place? And she's all like, Sardinia. And this is where the boss's backstory diverges from Baines, who, as you recall, was also born in a prison. <laughs> so I think that's right. Bane, born in prison, grew up in prison? Yeah, he was born in the mm. darkness. Raised by it. Yeah. You merely adopted it, Liam. The boss was also born in darkness, but then quickly left it for a pleasant seaside town. Paradise on Earth. Yeah. So Doppio is all like, ah... I'm a, a nice young boy. Nice young stupid idiot. Everyone thought he was a bit slow, a bit naive. Yes, yeah, so the uh, the narrator once again exposits in this little story from the past, his name is Doppio, mm-hmm. um, that a priest from the small church on that island took him in. Uh, the boy became known as someone cowardly and slow. Uh, it's 1985 now. He's saying hi to a frog on the roadside. Oh, hello, Mr. Froggy. How are you? Yeah, that's what he sounds like. Yep. Two local yokels come by and, like, scare him onto his butt. And, like, hey, don't be so close. Oh, it's you, idiot. Don't tell the father we said that. <laughs> Bye. See you, nerd. So he's sitting there. He's like, oh, I'm sure I'm glad I didn't crush this frog. And this woman comes up. And she's all like, this, hey. This, this random babe. Hey, I hear you, like frogs i like frogs i also hate bugs and people who smell i hate everything that's not beautiful are you from here hi my name's trisha's mom (laughs) it's just so like oh here's this lady i'm desperate to make a social connection i like frogs oh what have i said (laughs) yeah just roll with it just roll with it stupid 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 okay hang on wait you can bring it back to the second sentence i hate things that aren't beautiful oh you son of a bitch (laughs) Doppio's like, uh, do you want to uh, go get a drink or something? And she's all like, no. I well, don't know, mate, maybe. but it's your round. <laughs> <laughs> so she's all like, fine, let's go somewhere. I hate everything that's not beautiful. And you, I hate. But maybe that can change. She does like take a minute looking him up and down being like, are you beautiful? Yeah, you're sufficiently beautiful. You are cut. Let's go. And then uh, they leave. Oh, she wants sparkling water, hard water from France. What the fuck is hard water? What is it? Sparkling water, I think. I, oh, it's just because we know, was it heavy water? I think we had this conversation before. We talked about this while it's airing. We both immediately thought about heavy water, the science thing. Hmm. Which is like, uh, it's like water, but it's got like H3O or something or something weird. Hard water is water that has high mineral content from when water percolates through deposits of limestone, chalk or gypsum. 
Hard drinking water may have moderate health benefits, but can pose critical problems in industrial settings where water hardness is monitored to avoid costly breakdowns in boilers, cooling towers, and other equipment that handles water. Mm, calcification. Mm, yes. Mm, rust. Mm, yes. Um, natural degradation of materials. So she wants hard water from France. She wants to have her insides calcify. And they go. And but Where they- do they even go? It's just... This bit is just so good because nothing really comes of anything. We cut away from that and then he's having a, an evening conversation with the priest who raised him. And it's like, the, the father oh. is like, so, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, it is, of course, Father Sticks from part one. Oh, no. <laughs> no, but imagine. Just imagine. He's like 200 years old now. <laughs> he's all like, Father, I wish to become a sailor. A sailor, hey? Well, you are a simple man. That would be good for you. Yes. A sailor it shall be. And so the next day... That never pans out. doesn't mean anything. The next day they drive along, like, the this, fa- yeah. this road. He's in... The father's in the back of, like, a ute. And uh, he's looking out, and Doppio's already at the shore. He walked down there. With a girl. Oh! And the father's all like, hmm, it would be good to invest in a car for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't have to walk anywhere. Like a stupid idiot. Yeah, no. So simple. And cowardly. Hmm. Bit slow. Yeah. Probably because he doesn't have a car. <laughs> vroom, vroom. <laughs> so, like anyone who wants to get a car for their stupid adopted son, the father goes and starts hollowing out part of the house with a pick. Because he wants to make a garage. For the car. Which means just breaking through the floor. Yeah, you know. Okay. <laughs> Weird choice. He's picking out the floor. And he's all like, uh, chink, chink. Uh, d- oh. Why? There's a bit of cloth down there. Why, what's that? Why, this cloth is attached to human flesh. Uh, Why, that human flesh is attached to a, a human. hand? A corpse. I better carefully hollow it out. Tink, tink. Tink, tink. Why, that's no corpse. She's still alive. And there's the woman that we know only as Prisoner 696 is down there. Mm-hmm. The mother of Doppio. Yep. Uh, her lips have been sewn shut. Mm-hmm. You know, she's got dead eyes, but she's very much alive. She's... Been trapped under the floor for an inordinate amount of time. Well, 1965, it's now 1985. But she was on a 10-year jail sentence. Yeah, but who knows what happened? True. Who knows? Who knows? Happened? I'll tell you who doesn't know. Me and also everyone else <laughs> who has read JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Oh, no. What about me? Do I know? You will never know. Shit. And neither will you, listener. Let that sink in. We well, don't have all the so answers. Weird. Why is she down there? I don't know. <laughs> How is she still alive? I don't know. Why are her lips so shut? So she wouldn't make any noise. You know that, <laughs> Leia. Why don't you know anything else? It's so weird. Why does it happen? And while the priest is marvelling over this horror, we see the silhouette of the boy. But Poor Doppio. Somewhat bulkier than we've previously seen. Ooh. Enter into the room behind the priest with the pickaxe. The priest turns around. And he's like, oh, it's you. And then we see Doppio's We don't know that, We don't know he's face. called Doppio at this point, to be fair. Just the boy. Sorry, the boy. Yeah. We see him with a sinister grin and the edge of the pickaxe yep. shining in the darkness. Glinting you, sinisterly, you might say. Mm. Uh, so he murders the priest. He sets fire to the church. Strong winds carry the fire to every building in the town. No one knows how it started, but there were seven dead discovered after, in the aftermath, including the priest and the boy. <gasps> Ooh. How was the boy discovered dead? He wasn't. Ooh. The, the bodies were missing. Ooh. Ooh. Didn't they say they discovered deceased? No, it said the names of the people on the oh, list of missing. Right, yeah, okay. Missing or dead. Presumed dead. Mm. It's present day. <laughs> it's Sardinia. A sweet little boy is crouching in the street trying to catch a very interesting looking bug. It's like a blue beetle hopper. It looks... Okay, it's probably some sort of cricket. And I say this not because I have a great knowledge of European and or Japanese... Botany. Not botany. Uh, anthropology. Um, you know, I feel like I knew the word when I started talking, but then you said botany and now it slipped out of my head. Is it xenobiology? No. Is it... Anyway, um, because it looks like the Pokemon Cricketune. <laughs> so I think that's right. 
the basis of it's a cricket is that it looks like a Pokemon. Which is a cricket. Which is a cricket. Yes. Not that it looks like a cricket, that it looks like a Pokemon, which is a cricket. Yeah. It does. <laughs> Are we fucking nerds? No, we're idiots. Ah, that makes more sense. Okay. And there's a truck coming. Oh no. The boy. The someone who is unmistakably the boy. Ooh. Even though that was what, like fifteen years ago? Yeah, I don't know. He hasn't aged a bit. He's like, oh, watch out, young lad. There's a truck coming. And the young lad is like, I know, duh. And effortlessly gets out of the way. And now the boy is in the way of the truck. Oh, no. He lurches onto a nearby light pole. Yep. And he's like, ah, as a truck reams on past. Manages to pull himself uh, out of the way, but his uh, briefcase or suitcase is hit by the truck and crushed, and he himself falls into a puddle like a chump. Mm. And he's all like, "Oh, well, my day can't get much worse now. I got a stain on my pant. I've the got- very pants I was returning. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! It looks like old me, unnamed boy. Still, my name is Dobby." <laughs> So let's just go with Doppio now, sure, yep. because it's easier. <laughs> we know who he is. And there's no longer any ambiguity about whether or not we're looking at a young version of the boss or at Doppio proper. Mm, yeah. No, it was just like the entire first part of this episode, we were like, what if this has nothing to do with... Well, I wasn't. Well, not you, but like I was just like, what if this has nothing to do with... Anything. Anything. And it's just, or Araki just had a crazy week. <laughs> he was like, you know what, fuck it, we'll just... I'm putting this, this all in the manga. <laughs> That body that I found under that church, that fire. The real bizarre adventure was my narration. I saw a voice, a mysterious voice. is like, looks like you're down on your luck. Are you having a bad day? Or perhaps a longer streak of bad luck? Huh. Who said that? Why, that mysterious man over there. So if I had to describe this, this guy... He would be a Khajiit human. No, he looked... Do you know... Season three, season two of Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, The Battle City arc with mm-hmm. Marek and his rare hunters. Marek. Who wear like purple robes with the millennium eye on the forehead hood. Are they the ones where the robes are super big? Yeah. And they like come over. Yeah, yeah. And they're always and like... And in fact, yeah. I think the first one is introduced posing as a shifty fortune teller. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, he looks like a bargain bin version of them. <laughs> he's got weird cat-like eyes he's as well. He's got a beanie. He's got like a Tony Stark goatee. He's uh, He's got this shitty little fortune telling desk. Just in an alleyway. With like a piece of paper at the front. This is like note for note the way Joey meets the first rare hunter. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all like, okay, there's a fortune teller there. Hmm. Well, I don't really need my fortune told. I'm Doppio. I'm great. Let me tell your fortune. I'll make it cheap. I can tell just by with my by dint of my magic that Sardinia is your home. You've been traveling, but now you have returned. Huh. Well, anyone could be from Sardinia. Just a lucky guess, I guess. You, boy, what day is it? <laughs> Why, it's Friday, sir. Run down to the shop and buy me the biggest goose. How about you go... F- <laughs> Quick, buy me my untitled (laughs) goose roast. You there, boy, what day is it? Why, it's Christmas Day, sir. There's still time. Run down to EB Games and buy me the biggest copy of untitled (laughs) goose game they have. And then the boy rips off his mask. Ho, ho, ho. You, you were the goose all along, weren't you? I'm too late. Oh, yeah, I don't know what this is. (laughs) Rips off his own mask. He's a goose. You're living with a secret, boy. Light and shadow, inside and out. You lead separate lives. But if you take advantage of this with your unyielding personality, it's brought you nothing but victories. And we see the boy's eyes flash in a curious way for a mere moment. Mm, Very weird. It's almost like a glitch, but it's there. Mm -hmm. It's definitely part of the animation. You're very intriguing, boy. Let me tell you your fortune. For only 10,000 lira. No one knows how much money that is. (laughs) Look, I'm willing to say it's not too much, given that the fortune teller seems like an honest man. (laughs) Doppio's like, oh, look, that's a pretty broad statement. You know, everyone has secrets. So without paying him, the fortune teller then goes, you, I see into your past. Let me tell you of your fortune. You're looking for someone important here in Sardinia. 
Oh, well, you are. Just, I and like for everyone. I, is. I like this very like every man thing used to me. Like I go, oh, oh shucks. Like I guess everyone's looking for someone, you know, like a good friend or a beautiful girlfriend. I mean, it's not, it's not really particular to me. Don't I'm just you? an ordinary boy. <laughs> I'm not some kind of crazy person. People say that I'm cowardly and slow, but I think I'm just an ordinary down salt boy. And the fortune teller's like, no, you're wrong. So how do you do this fortune telling, huh? With that crystal ball? I can't remember what he says. He's like, oh, this old thing? No. No, see, my gypsy ways... Ooh, yeah, he says... Ro- he does he say said, Romani. He does say Romani. <laughs> yeah. Which is better than me. <laughs> yeah. He's like, my Romani fortune telling doesn't go through crystal balls. It goes through <laughs> things that have been created by coincidence. This old thing? Nah, this is garbage. He crushes the crystal ball in his hand <laughs> and he snorts it up. <laughs> Now this is the true this source is the of my good power. Stuff. <laughs> Tell me, have you ever breathed gas? <laughs> Pure, uncut, crushed crystal ball. Tell me, have you ever blended razor blades? Here's a fine idea for you, young boy. You should grind up crystals like this and sell it to kids. Hey, to snort. How old are you, by have the Have you way? ever considered selling the drugs <gasps> to the kids? Liam, don't imply such a thing. <laughs> no, we use... In our Romani fortune telling, the shape of something that's formed coincidentally. I suppose this this makes sense to me. This is like reading the tea leaves. Sure. Where it's like, it's made by destiny, and thus it is destiny. The Let symbol of fate, he says. Mm. Like, for instance, the shape of that mud on those pants you ruined. The very pants you were returning. Ah, well, well, well. That's... Great and all, but I don't see how that's connected to reading my fate. I can tell from the shape of that embarrassing mud stain on your pants that you're looking for your daughter here in Sardinia. Huh, that's mm. unusual. Me? You're so young. How could you have a daughter? But the pants don't lie. <laughs> so Doppio's like, come on, I don't have a daughter. I'm too young. Look at me. No, let me see your palm. I must see my pride as a fortune teller. I feel like this is bringing very much... Like a Japanese cultural thing to this Italian fortune teller being like, No, I must know. My pride as a fortune teller depends on me knowing your fate. No, you don't understand. I cannot dishonour my family legacy. I must know. I come from ten generations of alleyway fortune tellers. All of my family have lived in this alleyway and I'll die in this alleyway. (laughs) When will I die in this alleyway? Let me consult my own palm. Why, today? You ever see cats? That was my parents. Speak on that. Well, cats live in alleys. Oh, I thought you meant Cats the Musical. I did. Famously, where in the plot is the cats gather at their magical ball to decide which of them is allowed to die. Yeah, in the alleyway. Oh. Yeah. So he like starts grabbing the guy and Doppio. Doppio's all like, don't get off me, man. Come on, I'll pay you. I'll pay you 10,000 lira. No, No, 100,000 lira. No, I don't want 100,000 lira. His eyes like wig out and he gets real aggressive posture. And he's all like, I don't want 10,000 lira. He grabs him like by putting his finger in his mouth. And then like shoving him away and be like, you're very annoying. What good would it do for you to tell my fortune? You're about to die. And he's all... And he, he like essentially hulks out here. Yeah, he's twice the size he once was. Nick, at what point watching this did you realise what was going on? As in the multiple personality thing or the boss thing? The boss thing. Uh, It was right around this point where I went, oh. That's a familiar voice. So A, he has his voice. B, Trish's hair is pink. Doppio's hair is pink. Oh. Oh. The little boy from the OP is Trish's father. Right. What? (laughs) Three... He burned down the village. Oh. Oh. It's all so he was hanging out with that woman for what seemed like a good period of time. What do you mean hanging out with that woman? Oh, do you mean... Um, In the flashback. Trisha's mum. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess he just... She just never asked his name? No? I guess? <laughs> I know that he likes frogs. I also like frogs. That's enough for me. I don't like people with names. <laughs> no. No names. It's more romantic that way. We only come from one name. And that name is Shut Up. No name. (laughs) I don't know, it just seemed... This was the point where I just kind of went, Oh, so he's a big buff guy. And the boss was a big buff guy. And this guy has pink hair. But the boss didn't have 
pink hair. So something we flagged that you wanted to talk about this episode yes. is how I mentioned a few weeks ago that um, when we see the boss in silhouette in those previous scenes, the silhouette that he's shadowed in doesn't really look much like... No, it doesn't resemble it at all. See, you wanted to talk about that today, but I'm here to tell you now that, that this isn't even what I was talking about. What? What the hell were you talking about? The diversion from what we see is going to get so much more. Okay, alright. Does the boss have like a final form or something? Not even that. You'll see. Okay. You'll all see. Alright, okay. What if this isn't the boss? Although that said, given a certain reading, this could be the limit of the change we were seeing at the time. But you'd think that bright pink hair would show up pretty well in a darkened room. Yeah, you probably would. What if... What, this is going to sound like a really weird theory, mm-hmm. right? Because I've been thinking about this since you said he doesn't look anything like the dude, right? But the thing is, okay, so Trish has pink hair. Trish has pink hair. This boy's been around since who knows when. What if the boss wasn't always in Doppio and can go from like body to body or something like that's that? It's a nice idea that's not happening here. Okay, great. <laughs> Good. Um, it is interesting that, that Doppio has remained so young. I wonder if perhaps, um... Stand bullshit? That too. Yeah. Um, uh, possibly either the boss has been the dominant personality yeah. for so long that he has aged because he's been in control. Whereas mm. Doppio, or perhaps Doppio is perpetually youthful on account of his youthful idiocy. Perhaps. Or maybe Araki just forgot to draw him older. Nah. No? Okay. Maybe it's just that from the sheer power of King Crimson. Skipping time when his own aging. Exactly. <laughs> or something to do with holding your mother underneath the floorboards. For perpetual youth. <laughs> For perpetual youth. Maybe she's still alive. Maybe when he went to meet his mother um, after she got out of prison and have a, a loving reunion with her, with her mm. she tripped and hit her head. And started bleeding out the back of her head. And a surprising amount of blood. Mm. But there must be some better way of cleaning up the blood. Quickly, before the father gets home. And perhaps he would drink that blood to get rid of that particular amount day mm. by day. Mm. And that blood had mystical properties giving him perpetual youth. Ah, well, well, well. I think we've cracked this nut. Mrs. Gerchep or <laughs> Prisoner 696. <laughs> What if? Oh my god, that would be amazing! <laughs> oh man, so weird. Um, so yeah. Uh, so he's super young. Still. He hulks out. Yeah, he's super young, but he gets like twice as tall, twice as hulky. He's all like, "Hi, I'm speaking with the voice of the boss now. I am Big Guy McBoss Man. Do what I want. You are not a stand user, but you have the wisdom to see who people really are." Which was your greatest failing. For no one is allowed to know the identity of me, the boss. But what's your real name? My name is Doppio. Stop you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But you really are an excellent fortune teller. Out of respect for that, I shall... So he says, he says now, out of respect for that, I shall kill you instantly and painlessly. But we do see that mere, moments, mere moments from now, he does rip that guy's arm off to play a prank on him. <laughs> So the dude's all like, I'm sorry, but your your hand has changed. It's changed into something, oh, it's, yes. it's my hand. No, well, first he's, he does get a good look at that palm. He's like, yes, I knew it. You do have two personalities. Bear this secret and you shall never lose your splendor. I'm such a good fortune teller. And he's like, he's rubbing his face up against the palm in a very Yoshikage Kira mm. style. Mm. And then he gets it back and he's all like, oh, this isn't your hand at all. Why? It's my hand! And, like, he starts laughing madly. Uh, so the boss has cut off his hand and uh, placed it in his other hand. Yep. And he's all like, ah, oh, it's my hand! Ah! As his arm is just, like, bleeding out. And then he's like, King Crimson! Comes out and waves that guy's head in. Literally one punch. Oh, but before this happens, sorry, we skipped over it. Mm. Um, he's holding him up against the um, the wall of the corridor yeah. um, by the throat. Very Darth Vader. As you do. Uh, and he pulls out a little photograph and he's like, Oh, that's right. Look at this photograph. <sighs> this man's name is Risotto Nero. He is at large. <laughs> do you know where he is with your fortune telling magics? Why, I do, because I'm a fortune teller. Well, he's like, I can't tell you where he is. But I can tell you that he's in Sardinia. But that's where he is. (laughs) 
You'll encounter him soon. He's here and he's filled with vengeance. <gasps> That's the worst kind of thing to be filled with. The best kind of thing to be filled with is ice cream. Anyway, now you die. <laughs> and then he just kills him. And he kills him. And he's there in this alleyway. So the top half of um, the boss slash Doppio's body is... Very shadowed. Yeah. Which is... Very convenient for that rude kid from earlier who is watching all this in horror from the entrance to the alleyway. And he's all like, oh my god, <laughs> that dude just exploded. I mean, yeah, he can't see King Crimson, can he? No. Unless. Oh, <laughs> traumatic event. We, can, we can't see the, this guy very well in the darkness either at the moment, so we think the boss is menacingly walking towards this killed kid to murder him. Mm. But when he gets into the lights, little sweet, stupid Doppio again. He's all like, get out of the way, little rude kid. The bug's safe. Oh, thank I'm, God. I'm glad you didn't get hurt, little guy. Anyway, off I go. <laughs> yep, I'm coming to Costa Smeralda, taxi driver. Yes, please. Goodbye. The rude kid is like, and just runs off. Yep. Cab drives off. We see it passing Risotto Nero, who is standing in the entrance of a cafe watching a news thing about the plane crash. And he's all like, hmm. Neither of them notice each other. Ships in the night. <laughs> Costa Morel. I'm Risotto Nero. Jesus Christ. Well, I wanted to wanted to capture his terrifying appearance in the voice we do for him. <laughs> True. He have we ever spoken at length about his appearance? I mean, we have, of course, talking about his terrifying eyes and his jester's hat, but I think that's worth talking about his open trench coat and, like, bondage straps today. Yeah, because I noticed today there were, like, pilot seatbelt straps, but on his trench coat, you know? But, like, inside it, on his bare chest. Yeah. It's just like, okay, why, though? Why? Well, an assassin needs to be able to blend in in his surroundings. Mm, That is true. You know, most mafia members... They'll uh, just dress like regular people. Oh, like Risotto Nero. Exactly. And then he's wearing like horizontally striped, like bell-bottom trousers. It's weird. It's real weird. It's a look. It's it's a fashion. Yeah. Um, The cab drives off. We get a brief, like, uh, what's the word? Like, cut to ad break. Like, here's a setting the scene big board with like, Dun, 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 Yeah, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. And there's like a photo of Fugo that says, uh, Venezia? Adio. Ah. Uh, and then there's like one to everyone else giving you like their general. Abakio is just like, fuck Giorno. They haven't written on them. Oh. It's like written by someone. And exter- it's probably that evidence board the boss was looking at last time. Ah. It could also still just say, fuck Giorno. <laughs> true, true. So, the boy, Doppio. Doppio. He's, he's, he's in this cab. Excuse me, driver, do you have a phone? I seem to have broken mine. It was run over by that truck from earlier. Uh, no, I don't have a phone. Hmm. Well, that is inconvenient for me. In fact, driver, can you just stop here? Driver, driver, stop here. Driver, stop. We, we've arrived. Stop now. This is good. Driver, the building, the photo. Yes, this is where I must keep an eye out. And, uh... The narrator chimes in. He's all like, hey, it's me, the narrator. I'm here to tell you about Costa Smeralda in Sardinia. So you know this place? It's a thing. It was forgotten by history until a century ago, until a certain Indian millionaire became enamoured with it. Mm. And then it was still... And now you know the rest of the story. It's just kind of a place and that's it. Yep. Driver, driver, does your meter have an extra digit on it by mistake somehow? Hey, you trying to say that I want more money off you so I rigged my thing to give an extra digit to it so so you'd have to pay... 800,000 lira rather than 80,000? What do you think I am? That's an awful specific denial, driver. Hey, what are you trying to say about me? (laughs) But I I don't have that much money. Well, I know you do. Because you hid an envelope in your pocket before. And that could only be full of money. (laughs) Exactly. You know what I only carry my money in? Envelopes. You know why? Envelopes is why. Yeah. Mm. I like to envelop my money in the cool caress Mm. of an envelope. I like to partition my value. Envelope, or as the Italians say, envelope. Is that racist? Maybe. Quite possibly. Is it the most racist we've ever been? Fuck no. no. Absolutely not. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for having sins. <laughs> so he's like manhandling Doppio and like, give me your money, give me your money. Let me see the thing. And he pulls out the envelope and, and then Doppio's eyes go high wire and And he's all like Oh, I don't think so. With pinpoint accuracy, he jams his finger into the guy's eye socket and, like, hooks it around his eye. 
And he's kind of like pulling it back a bit. Yeah, but not enough to like do any lasting damage, but like be like t- to like insinuate at a mere moment I could rip your eye out. Mm. I can and I will. I'm Doppio. And he's all like, listen here, you little shit. All right, you're not going to pay 800,000. I'm not going to pay 800,000 lira. Okay. I don't even know how much money that is. I'm a simple, stupid man. I mean, he's speaking with still Doppio voice, but mm. kind of harsher and deeper. Yeah. And he's like, those who have seen what they shouldn't cannot exist in this world. <laughs> just imagine if you, working at the theatre, just had a guy come in and is like... Don't tell people what I do for a living. <laughs> okay, imagine if someone comes into your work... And the theatre. And you just go, well, hi there, what can I do for you? And then he goes... Oh, I think I might have a ticket. And then you're like, okay, I'll just grab a ticket. And he goes, Boom, no. shoot my finger behind their eye. No, but before you even have time, it's like, no, no, wait, stop, stop. I don't want the ticket. This is good. And he's like, well, I'm going to give you the ticket. It's like, no, 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 I don't want the ticket anymore. The contract is sealed. And then he just runs up to you and he's like, those who have seen what must not be seen cannot be allowed to live. Shunk. <laughs> just imagine that. Okay, I will. Great. I'm going to come do by do and do choose. Do. <laughs> I'm going to come by on Tuesday and do that. Ha, huh, you don't even know how I work. For that. You don't even know how I work, baby. Fuck. No, I don't. Uh, are you some kind of... We're not going to talk about this. Are you some kind of mafia boss? So, before he can rip this guy's eye out, mm. he stands bolt upright and goes like... Bring. So, the noise he's doing in Japanese is like... Yeah, it's like a do ro sound. Yeah, yeah. But it's something that is bring, ring, 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 ring. And he's like, ring a ring a ring. Oh, did you hear that? Did you hear a phone? I did hear a phone. Where did it come from? And the guy is just like, what the fuck? And every time he does it, he stands bolt upright and puts his hands like in front of him, like a, doing a T-Rex impression. <laughs> it is incredible. Uh, and he's all like, where is that and then fucking it, phone? And where then, is the phone? And then, it, yeah, and then as Nick demonstrated it for me just now, after he does that, he returns to regular body language. He's like, where is it? I will... I am going to find this phone. Hey, you didn't say you had a car phone. He says, looking at the little ornament of a cat man hanging from the rear view mirror. So he like reaches in, pulls it down. Snaps like, it off. And he's like, boss, is that you? As he holds it up like a phone, even though it's very obviously not a phone. Yes, boss, I've arrived. I'll keep an eye on it. And while he's talking, the driver is like, huh? I'm getting huh? the fuck out of here. Yep, just peels out. So he throws all the stuff out of the car, shuts the door, and is like, I'm out of here, and then just drives off. What's that you say, boss? The driver didn't see the thing, so I don't need to finish him off. <laughs> no, but boss, I think he saw the fo- Oh, yes, I'm sorry, boss. Yes, understood. And he's like, he just drives off. He gets the fuck out of there. And then we get the next portion. I'm here to watch the building. What's that? Oh, no. And then uh, one of his eyes like rolls up and turns green. And we transition to... Weird multiple personality vision. No, he calls him my doppio. No, my doppio. You must wait. Because it is not you who must be watching. It is you who is being watched. Look slowly. Act naturally. Don't be suspicious. And we see, just hanging out around the corner on the rocks, Risotto Nero. Very chill. He's finally made his move. <laughs> By standing. Just like the fortune teller said. Oh. <gasps> The plane crash drew his attention to Sardinia and he deduced the thing about the photo that we're all here to deal with. Now, my simple doppio, act natural. Take care of him, otherwise he'll interfere when Trisha arrives. All you need to do is get nice and close to him. Without him figuring out my true identity. Just get within two to three metres of him. That should be enough, for even I don't know his true power. Anyway, bye! (laughs) And doppio's all like, what was I doing? Oh, he goes, beep, and hangs up the phone. Oh, yeah. He's like, what was I doing again? My head hurts. Hmm. Um, the boss called. He told me to keep an eye and get closer. Get closer this to This is what? so interesting. Like, he has the phone call, and then he doesn't remember it. Yeah, well, his head hurts. But, it, like, it's, 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 it's like the subliminal the, messaging. Their weird psychological link is so curious. Yeah, it's like the subliminal messaging mm. is there, but Doppio is not consciously aware of yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Even though he is. He knows he's working for the boss. So that's unusual. Yeah, but he doesn't know what the boss's orders were. And obviously he doesn't know he is the boss. Yeah, so he's just like, I, I, needed, to, I needed to get he's closer. Just like, I need to... He got impulse to do the thing he was told to do and I responded guess. to being told to do. Yeah, so he's just like, do I get closer to the building? I guess I get closer to the building, sure. He runs over. No, he doesn't run over because he's like, get closer, huh? And then 
Rosetta Nero is right next to him, standing on some rocks, and we slowly pan up his body, mm. and we think it's going to be him just standing there all normal styles, but then he's, like, got his two hands curled behind his head, showing off his, like, biceps and elbows. And just... I don't know how he's physically standing, to be completely honest Very with you. good balance. Mm. Assassins need very good balance. They do. I don't know if this is physically possible, though. <laughs> um, so, let's, before we get into what happens next, take a moment to talk about Vinegar Doppio. Vinegar Doppio. I can't believe his name is Vinegar. V- 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 so, that's one of the things I wanted to share. His name is Vinegar Doppio. Yep. Vinegar is, of course, a liquid used as a condiment or for pickling. For pickling? Oh, I didn't know that. Sure, like... Oh, oh, I always thought it was just like brine that was used for pickling. I think it can go either way. Oh, shit. There you go. Today I learned Doppio vinegar. I don't know if it's literal or if it's just a figure of speech, but like when wine goes bad, they say it turns to vinegar, right? I'm pretty sure that's just a figure of speech. Okay. But there is like white wine vinegar. Yes. So that's, that'd be like a byproduct of, I think that's, of that then. I don't know what that is, but I think it's different. Okay. I have no idea. I hate wine, so... Doppio mm-hmm. means double in Italian. Oh. Because he's the boss. Ah. We don't know his star sign. We just know that he was born in the summer of 65. Now, we looked up... what Summer stars... star sign. <laughs> so it's either going to be... You said it was Gemini, Cancer... No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. Gemini, Cancer, Leo, and Virgo. The first of the mm. summer star signs is Gemini beginning on May 21st in the Northern Hemisphere, of course. Of course. As this is. And I would guess... I mean, it's got to be Gemini, right? Gemini is, of course, Latin for twins. Maybe. Associated with the twins Castor and Pollux in Greek mythology. Mm, I don't know. You're still not quite selling me on it. Gotta be. I mean, what else has it got going for other than two? It's an air sign with the ruling planet Mercury. I mean... Its quality is that it's mutable. Oh, mutable. Mm. Yeah. It's associated with the colour light green and yellow and the day Wednesday. The day Wednesday? Yeah. Okay, sure. Wednesday's child is full of woe. Is that how that works? I saw, you know, um, like bad off-brand Halloween costumes, yeah. like famously Juice Demon? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I saw one recently that was something like um, Midweek Spooky Kid <laughs> for Wednesday Adams. Oh, that is beautiful. <laughs> oh. Yes. Expressive and quick-witted, Gemini represents two different personalities in one, and you will never be sure which one you will face. They are sociable, communicative, and ready for fun, with a tendency to suddenly get serious, thoughtful, and restless. Mm. They are fascinated with the world itself, extremely curious, with a constant feeling that there is not enough time to experience everything they want to see. Okay, this does sound pretty bang on. (laughs) Gemini love and sex fun, and always ready for an intellectual challenge. That's what that says. Okay, sure. Yep, I'm with you. I'm with you. Gemini sees love first through communication and verbal contact and find it as important as physical contact with their partner. When these two combine, obstacles all seem to fade. (laughs) Okay. Anyway, Gemini's. Risotto Nero, he's here. He's here doing some stuff. So Risotto's all like, you intrigue me. Boy. Tell me about yourself. He's got a knife. Yeah, true. He has a knife. Doppio... His favourite knife, I guess. You know, Doppio, I don't have many knives, but I really do. But this one's my (laughs) favourite. Have I ever told you about my favourite knife? No, because I'm an assassin. And I've never met you before. Now, let me tell you about my favourite knife that everyone needs to know about before I die. It's this one, my favourite knife. (laughs) So he throws the knife. Doppio, like, he throws it basically at Doppio's feet. Mm. Doppio, like, trips and falls and eats shit and hits his head on a rock and just bleeding from the face. He's all like, oh my god, why are you doing this? Why'd you throw a knife at me? And Rosado's all like, Jesus Christ, I, this, this kid sucks. I, okay, he's... Hey, move your, fa- move your hands so I can see your face. And he's all like, Jesus, oh, there's so much blood I everywhere. I don't have any money. Why, why does this always happen to me, he says. And Rosado's like... Oh, geez, Which I sorry, guess is kid. fair, based on the short window we've seen into this guy's life. That kid tried to trick him into getting hit by a car. Mm-hmm. Um, the fortune teller was fine. The taxi driver tried to scam him and manhandled him. Yeah. And then this happened. And then this assassin shows up. <laughs> yeah. And he's all like, oh, man. Like, this this kid. Risotto's all like, this kid is, he's just kind of shit. His ignorance and fear are not an act. He sucks. He sucks 
the hardest suck. If he wasn't, if he was from Passione, he wouldn't act like this. He must be a civilian. So he walks forward, and Duffy goes like, "No, please don't." He's like, "I'm just gonna pick up my freaking knife." Jesus Christ! I, I am not interested in you anymore. Do you realize how shit you are? Do you realize how shit you are? I haven't done anything to you, and you're already bleeding. Duffy goes like, "Oh, my head hurts. Eyes are going nuts." And Rosales like, "You know, you're an interesting guy, but you're really not at all." <laughs> There was one thing that was curious, though. When you fell, I could tell you deliberately hid that envelope that's under your foot right now. (gasps) Go on. Stand up. Let me see it. Uh, The boss interjects, I think, at this moment. Yeah, like, get him. Get within two meters and I can kill him. And Doppio's all like, but I can't. I can't possibly do it. I'm so freaking scared. No, Doppio. Believe in yourself. If I can see that envelope, I'll let you leave, all right? So... He has no murderous intent or hostility. And he's not faking... But he's faking not knowing about the envelope. Show me the friggin' thing. I'm a body language expert. I'm Risotto Nero. I'm the mentalist. So, I think at this point a plane sound... Not not quite yet. First he yells at him and Doppio stands up in that cartoonish scared pose where you're on one foot. Yep. But we see that in the process of doing this, he's utilised his own blood to stick the photo to the back bottom of his shoe Uh... so that... Rosetta Nero just sees the empty envelope and he's like, oh, I guess it was just an envelope. Hmm, how weird. But there, now there is a plane sound nearby. And uh, Doppio makes the terrible decision of looking over at the plane. Just a, a minor glance, as one might do when in a high stress situation you hear a new sound. Yeah, and he's all like, please, I, I just, I don't know what's going on. Can you just let me go? I don't have any business with you. Your trembling isn't an act. You're a coward who can't lie. But I'm very interested in you because you're definitely a stand user. And Doppy is all like, what? what are you talking about? You see, that plane sound wasn't just a plane sound. <laughs> They've arrived. And we see Aerosmith flying through the sky. <gasps> Little bummer. <laughs> Who are you to show up at such an important location? Clearly the boss must trust you greatly. But there is great fear in your heart. You're a walking contradiction. Hey. Eyes change. He rushes at him and like, shut up. You're going to be the one who's scared now. And Rosada's all like, okay, no. You're running towards me. That must mean you're a close range stand user. You want to get within two to three meters of me. But I know that I can kill you. And Doppio vomits up bloody razor blades. And he's all like, oh my God, where the hell did they come from? Oh my God, that was full on. Keeps running at him. Oh, I'm gonna shove these razor blades right up your ass. He keeps running. Then, like, his face is full of... Nails? Nails and, like, sewing needles. And And he's all like, Jesus, what the hell's going on? Like, his whole cheek, like, is punctured by them suddenly. Yeah. And Rosario Nero's all like... Bro. So this bit's weird, given the whole two meters thing. Mm -hmm. Because Doppio runs up to him and does, like, a couple of pointless punches that he... Rosado effortlessly like does that swaying dodging. Yeah. And then he f- does that jump and fall backwards off the cliff, su- uh, Jesus style. Yeah. And just falls. Yep. And now, then one would suspect that he had been within two meters yeah, but the whole time. One may be wrong. <laughs> How long is Doppio's arm span? Perhaps seven meters? Perhaps Doppio is a god. A giant. <laughs> Maybe Rosado Nero and Doppio are actually. 22 yeah, this feet is like tall. a Godzilla battle and we don't realise it. <laughs> oh no. Ring, 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 ring. Is that a phone I hear? Why, a, pho- a payphone out here. Of all places. Who would have thought? He grabs a frog. <laughs> yep. Pulls it up. He's like, hey boss, how's it going? My dop you. You must be careful. Boss, boss, the man is being mean to me. I need your help. Shh. Silence, Doppio, you sweet, innocent child. Sweet, stupid boy. Listen, Doppio. It's very much, in both the sound and tone of voice, it's very much, um, oh, what's that guy's freaking name? Uh, Prosciutto, yeah. talking to Pesci. Yeah, very much so. Mm. And he's like, listen, Doppio, my sweet, sweet, innocent Doppio, shut the fuck up <laughs> and get the job done. <laughs> Idiot. All right, go after him. Two meters. I can only show up to help you when you're within two meters. But boss, I can't possibly do it. Oh, boss. And and there's a cool panning shot here where that knife still sticking out of the ground is like in the foreground out of focus and we pan around it on Doppio who is in focus on the frog phone. Hmm. And uh, Doppio's like, boss, I can't do it. I can't get within two meters. He's scary. Get closer, Doppio. Everything will be over if he sees me then escapes. So I have to be sure. 
And have you already forgotten, Doppio, the most important part of this entire episode? That you have a piece of King Crimson in your face? And as he says this, the second King Crimson head opens up in Doppio's forehead. And end of episode! Yes. <laughs> Turning Doppio into a Two-Face. Of course, Two-Face the villain with two faces in the one face. Yeah, maybe they should call him Half-Face. Or One-Face. <laughs> We've been over this several whole, times in the recent weeks. Whole head. <laughs> but of course, Doppio right now is a literal two-face for having two full faces. Ah, so they should call him Two-Face. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> they should call him Face-Face. Voldemort. What was the name of the guy who's Voldemort? Tom Riddle? Yeah. Wormtail. Wormtail? That's a guy. That's the name of the dude. Which dude? The dude, you know how Voldemort was on the back of the guy's oh, head? Oh, uh, Professor Quirrell. That's the one. I see what you're driving yeah, at yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they should call him Voldemort. Okay. Or rather, wrong way around Voldemort, bad spell did. Yep, good yeah. name. Thank you. Yep. Could stand to be a little longer. Uh, well, I won't, so... Nick, highlights and lowlights for this episode. Why must you make me choose a highlight? Um, so good. So much good in this episode. Oh, it's hard. It's hard to actually choose. Because it's all really fucking good. I want to say the highlight has to be... I want to say Doppio with the phone call-y bit. Just because... It's so bizarre. It's so unstable. You know? Like, anyone watching that would just be like, what the fuck is wrong with this, this guy? guy? This guy's got me scared to death. Exactly. Which is like, this is a different kind of villain that we've had. Yeah. Because you've had dudes like Dio who are like... I'm the best. Dio's larger than life. Yep. We've had Yoshikage Kira's like, I'm calm and I am resolved to murder everyone and I'm great. This guy is like, hey boss. I'm a sweet little boy. Hey, what's the call, bruh? And you're like, um, no offense, but he crazy. Yep. Like, good God. So that's fun. Mm -hmm. It's a fun little like, wow, maybe he should seek special help in some way. Yeah. Your highlight? My highlight only works for the anime. But it is, of course, Risotto Nero coming back into the scene, Ooh. coming to fruition with all this foreshadowing over the last 29 episodes or whatever it is. Yeah. And none of it was in the manga? A little bit, I think. But I don't even know if we've seen his face prior now, if I recall correctly. Let me check. Let me check, actually. Oh my his god. JoJo wiki page. Oh my god. So Risotto Nero first appears in the manga in chapter 542, which is My Name is Doppio Part 1. What even? What the fuck even? So he just shows up. He's like, he shows up. He's like, I'm the leader of the Hitman team. You've never seen me before. Everyone else has kind of been forgotten about by now. What the what? <laughs> so much better this way. Wow. Okay. Amazing. Low lights. Oh. Hmm. My low light has to be the weirdly inconsistent way that the boss slash Doppio is handling people seeing him. Because the rude kid runs away, yep. the taxi driver goes away, but they both know who Doppio is, so that would just attract attention. Mm. I mean, the taxi driver has just seen Doppio, just thinks he's some stupid kid yeah. who, who has anger problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He but doesn't like, know there's any association with the head of the crime organisation. Perhaps, but it still might get unwarranted attention mm. drawn to it. The kid, I understand less because, I mean, we've established that he saw him murder someone. And that, you know, this guy's a monster who yeah. did terrible things for no reason. Mm. And yet, the kid just gets to go away. No one will believe you. <laughs> it's just weird. It's just a weird way of framing mm. this guy as, like, I'm a really bad dude. I was born in the darkness. Moulded by it. And yet, I wasn't. Because I let that kid get away. Yeah. Just odd. Your low light? I think my low light is the thing with the mum under the floor. It just doesn't really... Make sense or do anything? It's just like look at look Ooh. what a secret monster this guy was the whole time. How but how did he do any of it? Unclear. Yeah, no. Why is she still alive? And, and why did he do it? I don't know. That's why he's such a monster. Ah, his motivations are so unclear that even I, Rosotto Nero, head of the Hitman team, can't figure it out. Whoa. So Nick, yeah, the gang have arrived at Sardinia as. As foretold by the swooping Aerosmith. Fuck yes. Uh, Vinegar Doppio is locked in a life and death battle with 
Risotto Nero, head of the Hitman team. Thank you. Uh, he has recently vomited up razor blades and had his face full of sharp bits of metal. But he looks pretty healthy but otherwise. But he must get within two metres. He's got a portion of King Crimson's power. What will happen next time on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 5 Vento Oreo in the episode entitled King Crimson vs. Metallica? Get the fuck out of here! Nick's face lit up as I, as I knew it would. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. Well, now I know what Risotto Nero's thing is going to be. What is this thing going to be? He can make metal objects just appear. But how and why? That's a good question that I don't care about right now <laughs> because right. Metallica. Metal powers. Yes. Sad news about Metallica. Not coming on their Australian tour anymore. We talked about this like last episode. Did we? Yes. Oh, shame. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh my god, amazing. Okay, so we know that little boy Doppio. Sweet, stupid Doppio. Fuck face McGee Doppio has to get within two metres of Risotto Nero. So that the boss can kill him. And presumably, would you think he would hulk out and do full I the believe boss so. once kill is certain? I believe so. I think he would just go King Crimson and then walk up to him in time weirdness. Time mode. And just go, cool, I've won. Well, you had a good run, Risotto Nero. Snap neck. Pretty much. Um, or does he want, he want it to be like, he wants him to know that he's won. He wants him to die when he's aware of it. You know, like Ooh. how you know, like how in his final moments, Light Yagami. Well, why did they say it like that? What the hell was that? Light Yagami wanted L to know that he was Kira True. and that he had won. Yes. Death Note. That's a very old reference. I guess I'm a very old person. <sighs> yep. Um. Yeah. Possibly. Maybe he's that much of an asshole. But it does feel like he wouldn't do that because he didn't try and do that with Bruno mm. or Trish. He just tried stealing her away and being like, now no one knows who I am. I will just kill her and Well, he didn't time. plan to kill Bruno in that time. He wanted him to keep being a loyal soldier. Mmm. Mmm. Because Bruno... Hadn't betrayed him That's true. yet. Yes. Yet. The boss was unaware. That he knew of. Ooh. Because, of course, he let John I live for killing Leaky Eye Luca. Uh, and... Was, had the tracking device. Mmm. I wonder. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. So near... Okay. Let's start with Metallica's power. Metallica's power. Metallica's power needs to be something to do with metal Mm -hmm. and like sharp metal stuff, right? Where we've seen razor blades and nails and needles and shit. Yeah. So maybe it's to do with, I can take metal from somewhere and make it appear somewhere else maybe. So it's not just a matter of, oh. So so is he like, did he like teleport all the razor blades from the nearby town into Doppio's throat? I don't know if it works that far away, but maybe. Or is it, did he just have like a pocket full of razor blades? I imagine a pocket full of yeah. razor blades, yeah. <laughs> um, or maybe it's something weird like time bullshit and it's time versus time. No. Maybe. I don't know. It could also not have anything to do with metal and it could just be... That like, he likes to use it. He just likes to use metal, to metal objects. Yeah, he's like, I really don't like metal, but I do like metal. I think you're losing the thread on that one. I do um, like the genre of music. So they're going to fight each other? Yep. How is he going to get within two metres of them? Okay, I think there's also going to be, between this massive villain fight, we're going to have cuts away to Giorno, Mr. Narancio. Yes, that was, gonna, that was going to be my next question. How are they going to... Are they going to become aware of slash involved in this, or is it just going to be completely unknown to them? I think it's going to be a and, matter and, of... And Doc be, Doppio slash the boss will be like, they're getting closer. I need to finish him off quick, but I'm pinned down. I think it'll be... Okay, so I think they're going to get closer and they'll just be in the background fighting, but they'll have that weird tension where neither of them really wants to be seen by the good guys. Mm. Sorry. The protagonists. uh, And they will... They'll just kind of try hiding their way around. And so Doppio will be at a disadvantage because Rosario Nero, if he finds out where he is, he'll be like, razor blade, obviously. So maybe, <laughs> razor blade obviously yeah so maybe it'll just have to do with like a stealth battle around Jorno and the crew who they don't want to be seen by mm-hmm. as they're fighting around them kind of thing and Bakio will be like what was that just now yeah basically probably that. nothing yeah basically that yep I reckon that's what's gonna happen alright and who will win uh, probably the boss Pro- probably the boss <laughs> Rosetta Nero just kills the boss and is like now I'm the final boss I mean, it could end out that way, but I don't think it will. <laughs> It'll be really weird if that happens. God, I wish, I wish that all the foreshadowing with Risotto was in the manga. It's, 
But it just, it's so beautiful to me that it wasn't. You know, like he just appears out of nowhere and goes, oh yeah, I was the head of the Hitman team all along. Me, Rosado Nero. You know, the guy that you've never seen before. Yeah. It's like, what? Huh? Oh, that's Why amazing. are we watching this battle? Amazing. Because I feel like this way, you know, because we, obviously we meet Doppio this episode and we get immediate affection for him. Yeah. Because uh, he's great. Yeah. Um, but with this way, we have an attachment to Risotto too. Hmm. Even though, like, even though it's kind of as a scary, cool guy. Yeah. But, but it's not we're, like... We're invested in both of the combatants. Yes. It's kind of like you know where both of them are coming from. Yeah. We know that Risotto has had all of his team murdered one by one and we've seen him interact with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Still kind of an asshole. Oh, still a terrible person. Yeah. But, but we know... That he's all like, I was the leader of the Hitman team. Yeah. Hit men without hip borders, you know what I'm saying? All right, I think that's about it. Okay. Uh, JoJo's World, of course, if you want to give us a rating or review on service of your choice, I recommend it. It's really easy, uh, especially on the um, standard podcast app that comes with Apple phones. Uh, next time you're just going to queue up an episode, just scroll down on that same page and it's right there. Just click the five star button. I don't use that, so I don't know how to do it. Well, it's there. I don't listen to our stuff. I'm sorry, Liam. It's only been 130-something episodes. Nine. 139 episodes. Still haven't listened to a single one. But maybe that's but for the But you best. lived them. I lived them. Nick made our music. Hey, what up? It's uh, Jotally by me, Milk Juice. Uh, October is going to be an interesting month for us. Oh boy! Quick scheduling note. Uh, I've got several... It's a big big work time event for me in periods where we usually record. And you've got things coming up. I've got a family wedding that's going to take me away for a weekend too. Hmm. So there may be some disruptions to our schedule, but please bear with us. Thank you. And good night, you sacred innocent souls. To be continued. To be continued. Arrivederci.